Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings and in this video I'm going to show you how to install Fedora Server as a guest OS on a Hyper-V VM. At the end of the video if you enjoyed the content make sure you click like and, and also subscribe to the channel so that way you can be aware of when new content comes available. So getting right to it, um, there are a variety of different distributions of Linux you can choose. I'm not going to go into the particulars of why I've chosen Fedora. I typically use it for my lab stuff so that's that's what I'll be using today. And also uh, sometimes Linux has the has, I guess the reputation now I, I think it's it's far less so now but the, the reputation of being very difficult to install and difficult to deal with and you're gonna find with this particular installation that is far from the truth the, the, this will go rather smooth for us so to get Linux we'll go to get fedora.org see I have it here on the browser and we'll hover over server click download now you're gonna have a couple of different options I typically choose net install and the reason being is this is the most lean of the installers it does not come with really any extra software it's kind of the basic tools that's needed to run a server during the installation process you can pick multiple packages if, if you want and during the the installation process and you'll see this what the installer is going to do is download the most recent versions of these packages and so that way at the end of the installation you don't have to do a bunch of patching of your your server it'll be pretty much already up to date so you'll click download and it'll thank you for downloading it and pop up a little dialog to do that I've already downloaded this so we're gonna click cancel I just want to show you how how you would get the the ISO um, if someone tries to sell you a Fedora ISO know that you're about to be scammed because you can get it 100% free from getfedora.org all right, so now we're in our Hyper-V manager and we're going to click new in virtual machine. I'm going to name this Fedora test. Click next. For generation, choose generation 2. Generally, you want to do this for really any guest that has a modern operating system. Gen 1 is not necessarily a bad thing, but it emulates older hardware, and there will be times where, where, where you have to use Gen 1. But if you're able to use Generation 2, I would do it. Just gives you a few more features, and I think handles the 64 bit OSs a little bit better. Now, for assigned memory, I'm going to turn off dynamic memory right now. I'm going to give it 2 gigabytes, which is far more than it really would need like if I was just running a little Apache server on this you don't need two gigs of RAM but since the installer is a GUI having the the, the two gigs helps out some and in your home lab sometimes hardware um, is at a premium you might not have the hypervisor with you know, 128 gigs of RAM and all this kind of stuff so you you try to be economical with with your RAM usage for networking uh, you do need to pick a virtual switch that's going to have internet access because the installer is going to go out to Fedora and pull down packages. So we're going to choose default switch. You might recognize Foo Switch if you watched one of my earlier videos about creating a um, siloed off private network in Hyper-V. We made Foo Switch during that video. For hard disk, we don't need 20 gigs, but I'm just going to throw 20 gigs at it. I have that available to me. And we're going to choose to go ahead and install the operating system. So we chose the Fedora ServerNet install. I had downloaded that earlier. It gives you a summary, and then we'll click Finish. Now there's one other step we need to do. We're going to right-click the VM, go to Settings, and for Security, we're going to click, or uncheck rather, this option. I've tried all the templates. They will not work with Fedora. I can't tell you the technical reason why that is, but just in my experience with um, a lot of Linux distros and, and Hyper-V, Fedora in, in, in particular, th this option needs to be disabled. If you find a way to make it work, awesome, but just know that you're probably gonna need to disable Secure Boot in order for, for your VM to, to function properly. All right, so we'll click Apply, OK. And now we'll connect to the guest and we'll start the VM. While it's doing this initial boot, you'll have an opportunity to test the media if you want. I'm not going to do this because I already know that it works. I've done this install a few times just to make sure that I will be telling you accurate information. 
So we'll choose install Fedora 29 and the installer will start at this point. Now it's not going to be the exact same as a Windows installer, but you're going to find that it is not nearly as intimidating as you might think it, it would be. My only critique of using the net install is sometimes it takes, or I, I, I honestly haven't timed it to be able to tell you exactly, but it feels like it takes a little bit longer than um, just the DVD install, simply because the DVD install just installs what's on that that ISO versus pulling down various packages and such. But in the long run, I think the net install, especially in a lab situation, the net install is the way to go. So on the first screen, we're going to choose our language. We're going to keep this at English, and I'll click Continue. I always found the first screen takes a moment or so to, to click through it. I think it's because of what's happening in the, the background. Uh, that, that, that didn't take that long. Sometimes I've seen it take up to like 15, 20 seconds to be able to go through. So we're going to pretty much keep defaults for everything, but I want to explain a couple of things that are going on. First of all, it is, it's finding the nearest mirror to you to be able to, to get packages, and it's getting the metadata about those packages. In just a moment, we're going to look at the software that's available for us to select, and this is what I was saying as far as with the net install, you get to pick and choose what you have on your server, so you have a little bit more control over what's going on. The one thing that you have to do on the screen before you can continue, if you notice the begin installation is grayed out, and even though we're going to keep the defaults, you have to go through the installation destination screen. So we're going to click here, even though we're going to tell it to automatically configure our storage, which it'll uh, create volumes as needed on the disk, and the you know, the de defaults are defaults for a reason, it's, it's um, what, what they found to, to be functional for most most um, use cases. Of course, you can change this as needed if you have a special case, but for what we're doing and for a lot of your lab applications, this will be fine. So we'll click Done. Because we didn't change anything, we just basically said we want to keep the defaults. Now, I am going to go to Software Selection. This is one thing I do a little differently. Click that again. There we go. I'm actually going to choose Minimal Install. Fedora Server Edition is a minimal install plus a couple of tools that um, that you are likely going to need and use for, for managing your server. I like to do the minimal install because of its name. There's really nothing else installed on it, and so if, when you're wanting to deploy whatever application that you want on the server or configure whatever service, you have complete control over what you put on your server. But with these base environments, there are all sorts of options available to you and what choosing these options will have it download the appropriate packages and dependencies of those packages needed to be able to do the function and then from the base environment you have various other little items that you can in, in install as needed i personally like doing doing this um, manually especially in my lab because you're you're really kind of get, wanting to get into the details and, and learn exactly what's going on. But in a non-lab situation, you know, it might make sense to just to, to go ahead and, and choose some of these options. So we'll stick to the minimal install and then click Done. It'll bring us back to our screen here and notice that that grayed out has now changed to begin installation. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you, you can click Network and if you want to disable the NIC, um, you can do that. I would not suggest it, but you can. Uh, you can also set um, static IP as needed. You can alter the host name if you want, but we'll keep all those at default and begin installation. Now, before the installation will finish, you do have to configure a root password. So we're going to go and we are going to go ahead and do that. Didn't fat finger that. Okay, they matched. Now you do not have to make a user. I suggest that you do though. Generally, it's not a good idea to go running around as root on your your server all the time. But rather, it's better to be on the server as another user. And then, if you need to use the su command to change to root, or if you don't need to change the root and just need elevated privileges, use um, sudo or um, sudo is it sometimes pronounced i think sudo is is heard less often than sudo when i first learned it, it was i called it sudo anyway so i'm going to pick a 
just have the full name username be the same I'm gonna make me an administrator that way I, I will be in the wheel group and have access to the sudo command give myself a password and click done so at this point notice with downloading the RPMs it's it's pretty close to, to already being done depending on your internet connection this this may take a bit of time but in, in general it, it, it tends to be pretty fast for me so I'm gonna pause for a moment let this finish doing its thing and then we'll we'll pick up once the download and installation is done and we're back you can see by the clock it took just a couple minutes or so to finish doing the install and now we will click reboot this will take just a moment or so if you're new to Linux one thing you'll find is booting tends to be a little faster now this kind of odd graphic is not atypical you will often see that with any OS booting and in just a moment we'll be at a login screen famous last words this should work right all right and here we go so let me log in with the user account I made so we're in in my home directory we have network access and we can resolve DNS yep no problem there and as um, sudo dnf upgrade I think I fat fingered that nope I did not so it'll check for updated packages dnf is the program that you use in Fedora for that you might be familiar with yum if you have used CentOS and then the apt-get commands if you come from the world of Ubuntu this shouldn't take too terribly long it'll check but if I am correct it's not it's it will find nothing it'll say everything is is up to date so we'll pause for a moment while it works on that Yep, and there we go. Dependencies resolved, nothing to do complete. So unlike um, some other installations where you'll install your server and then you, you, you have to immediately patch it, doing the net install with Fedora, it downloads the newest packages during the installation. So when you're done, you, you have nothing to, to patch and you're ready to um, configure your server to your heart's content. So hope you found this video useful if you did make sure you click like also subscribe to the channel thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time